أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأليس للإنسان إلا ما سعى وأن سعيه سوف يرى ثم يجزاه الجزاء الأوفى وقال عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنذر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خب إن الله خبير بما تعملون Sadaq Allahu al-Azim All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify Him and we give thanks to Him for His many boons and favors that He has bestowed upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah He is alone and He has no partner and I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His servant and final messenger Ibadallah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Qur'an that man shall have nothing except that which he has strived for. We have experienced most of the month of Ramadan, just a few days are remaining. And there are those who have excelled in terms of their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of their ibadah. And there are those who slept throughout the month and didn't care if it was Ramadan or not Ramadan. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. He says in the Quran, وَأَلَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى And man shall have nothing except that which he strived for. وَأَنَّ سَعَيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى And his strivings, what he has done, it will be seen, it will be recognized. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and, and we know this for a fact, that even if our good actions, our deeds, the things that we do in this life, it is not being recognized by man, that it will certainly be recognized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And he will have a complete reward, a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a reward that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the opportunity to witness this blessed month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the opportunity through life, through health and strength for us to do as much as we can in terms of worship of Him in terms of praying, in terms of asking forgiveness, in terms of 
making zikr, reciting Quran, listening to Quran, in terms of renewing our devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we took this opportunity. And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, here we are about to bid farewell to the month of blessings to the month which brought us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here we are about to bid farewell to a month that has taught us many lessons. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we hosted Ramadan we hosted a guest, and guests, they come and go. And we do not know as host if we will ever have the opportunity to host our guest again. When we look around in our families, when we look around in our communities, We see, my dear brothers and sisters, the dear ones, loved ones, who were with us last Ramadan, they're not with us this Ramadan. And so they were host to this blessed guest, but they were not able to play host again this year. Who will be host to Ramadan next year? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Yes, Ramadan will come at its appointed time. But many will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many may be in that state even if they haven't returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would not be able to recognize the opportunities that Ramadan has to offer because of old age, because of Alzheimer's disease, because of many other things. There are people today who are living, Muslims, and they are not able to understand the true impact of this blessed month of Ramadan. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having given us this opportunity to witness this blessed month of Ramadan. And as we look at this month, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we don't want it to leave us without us doing some sort of muhasaba, without us taking account of what we have accomplished during this month and what we intend to do with that which we have accomplished during this blessed month of Ramadan. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, that you take account of your life before you, your deeds are put in the scale. Hasibu and fusakum kabla and tuzanu. He said, take account of your life before your deeds are put in the scale, good deeds and evil deeds. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَالْتَنْذُرْ نَفْسُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ O you who believe, fear Allah and look to what you are preparing for the morrow. The concept of making sure that we always look at our actions and that we try to perfect them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us in the month of Ramadan 
the opportunity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to purify ourselves of sins because we see so much in the month of Ramadan we are being reminded to ask Allah for forgiveness that our fasting grants us forgiveness our qiyam our standing in the month of Ramadan it grants us forgiveness the feeding giving iftar to those who are fasting it brings us forgiveness and standing in the night of Qadr it brings us forgiveness and so it's all about forgiveness purifying ourselves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he reminds us in the Quran successful indeed is the one who purify himself and the one who corrupts himself he will be from among the unsuccessful ones and so Ramadan give us that opportunity to purify ourselves of wrongdoings so that we may enter the paradise, the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us reflect, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, what lessons have we learned that we would like to take with us when we leave or Ramadan leaves us. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we learn patience. We avoided that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made permissible for us. Eating and drinking, marital relationship, it is permissible for us. But we had patience and we avoided it during the daytime in the month of Ramadan for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, This sabr, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that this is the month of sabr. And sabr, patience, its reward is paradise. And so when Ramadan leaves us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to continue to demonstrate patience in our lives because there are times when we will be tested there are times when we will be, aff be afflicted by calamities there are times when we will be, be having you know problems in our circles in our homes in our communities we do not give up but we have patience and we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what Ramadan has taught us that when it comes to the unlawful that we need to have that sabr and make sure that we avoid that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made unlawful my dear brothers and my dear sisters Ramadan taught us to control our passions and desires. Ramadan taught us to have that self-control. Fasting is prescribed unto you so that you may learn self-restraint, so that you may control yourselves and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters when Ramadan leaves us let us not be slaves to our lust and our desires but let us make sure that Allah and his commands remain our focus Ramadan my dear brothers and my dear sisters it taught us to have control over our bad temper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran about the muttaqun, 
the people of taqwa, which we are supposed to develop in the month of Ramadan, he says, And those who control their anger, and they are forgiving to mankind. And so Ramadan taught us to control our temper, not to quarrel, and to be polite. And so when Ramadan leaves us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to be in the mood of Ramadan and to control our temper and to be polite and tolerant with others. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Ramadan taught us the concept of charity, that we must be of those who are willing to give out of what Allah has given unto us. For we understand that everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلَّهِ مِرَاثُ samawati wal ard, And to Allah belongs everything that is in the heavens and the earth. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, in the month of Ramadan we give our zakah and we give our sadaqat. And so when Ramadan leaves us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to continue to be kind and continue to be generous and we need to continue to be good unto others. Because this is what Ramadan has taught us, that we show care and concern for one another. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in the month of Ramadan, we were engaged as we continue to be engaged in the acts of Nawafil, in that uh, we did not only look at the Furud, we did not only look at our five daily prayers, but we prayed Salatul Tarawih. And some people, after Salatul Tarawih, they stayed up late at night standing only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, when Ramadan leaves us, let us continue to be regular in our prayers, in our salah. Let us continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the same vigor, with the same type of intensity, that we did during the month of Ramadan. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Ramadan saw us frequenting the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in multitudes. Here and everywhere, people just go to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the congregational prayer, for the breaking of the fast, for standing long hours at night, listening to the Quran, making sujood and ruku and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when Ramadan leaves us, let us remember the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure that we visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that Sabatun yudhilluhum allahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhillum. There are seven categories of people whom Allah will shade with his shade on the day of judgment. On that day when there will be no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And among those categories, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rajulun a man whose heart is attached to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who spends time in the house of Allah, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us remember too, it is not only coming to the house of Allah, 
but maintaining the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us in the Quran, taking care of the house of Allah. Innama ya'muru masajid Allah, man amana billah, wal yawmil akhir, wa aqama salah, wa ata zakah, wa lam yakhsha illa Allah. Verily, the ones who will build and maintain the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the masajid, are the ones who believe in Allah, those who believe in the last day, those who establish prayers, those who give in charity, and those who fear none except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's our money and our wealth, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, the wealth of the believers that will maintain the houses of Allah and build the houses of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive those who involve themselves in taking funds from other sources for building and maintaining the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Ramadan came and we renewed our contact with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We listened and we recited and we implemented the laws, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when Ramadan leaves us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us continue to read the Quran. Every day, let us read just a short or tiny portion of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't have to be opened in front of us. We can read from our memory. And today, there is so much technology. You just put things in your cars and people have the Quran on their iPhones, on their iPods, on their iPads. And, and, and so we need to listen and to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more often, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It's not, on, it's not a book only for the month of Ramadan. Ramadan taught us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that family is very important. And so, there are many families who invited their families for iftar, for the breaking of the fast and to have dinner. And so there were many family gatherings. And those, there were many who came to the masajid and they broke their fast along with their families and the masajid too, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. They took time out of their busy schedule to maintain that relationship to build that family relationship. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to pay more attention to our families out of the month of Ramadan. We need to pay more attention to our youth and our children. And when I say about paying more attention to them, we need to make sure that there is that terbiyah that training, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and that we educate them. We make them understand who their creator is. We see in the month of Ramadan so many young people. Young people in every masjid that you go, you see young people coming out to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be proud fathers and mothers, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that when Ramadan leaves you, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to take your life, that you would be a proud father, that yes, you are leaving behind those who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be like Yaqub alayhi salam, when he gathered his sons around him and he said to them, Ma ta'abuduna min ba'di. What will you worship after me? And they said, Na'abudu ilahaka. Wa ilaha abaika Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq ilahan wahidan wa nahnu lahu muslimun. The sons, they said to their father on his dying bed, We will worship your God and the God of your forefathers, Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq, ilahan wahidan wa nahnu lahu muslimun. One true God and we will submit our lives to that one true God. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Ramadan came, and you know many nights, you were asked to pray for those who are suffering in different parts of the world. You were asked to pray for those 
who are fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You were asked to pray for those who are being treated unjustly by their governments, by their, their leaders. You were asked to pray for those who die and do not know for what reason they were killed. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, that was the concern for the Ummah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Man lam yahkam bi amril muslimin falaysa minhum. He who does not concern himself with the affairs of the Muslims, he is not from among them. And so when Ramadan leaves, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us continue to remember our dear brothers and sisters, regardless of where they may be. Let us continue to help. Let us continue to pray for peace in the world. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Ramadan came and we increase our good deeds. We continue to, to do more and more good deeds. And so when Ramadan leaves us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us get into the habit of doing good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Innal hasanati yudhibna sayyat. Verily, good deeds wipe away evil deeds. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we want to continue to make sure that we are doing good things in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as we spend these final days of Ramadan, that he grants us the opportunity to reap the blessings of the great night, the night of Qadr the night that is better than 1,000 months, the night in which the Qur'an was revealed, guidance for humanity. You know, Ramadan itself, the entire month is a blessed month. But the last 10 nights, this latter part of Ramadan, it is considered more blessed because of that night the night of Qadr, the night in which it is said that there is peace until dawn, the night in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes oath in the Quran and he says, Hamim wal kitab al mubin inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka. By the explicit Qur'an, by the Qur'an that makes things clear, verily we revealed it in a blessed night. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us it's a blessed night. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, as you spend the rest of Ramadan, increase your dua. Increase your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I was to know which night it is, which night is the night of Qadr, what should I supplicate? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa faafu anni. Oh Allah, you are forgiving, you love forgiveness, so forgive me. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, in these last nights of Ramadan, increase your asking of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continuously ask him, make this dua and continuously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. Because remember, some people, you know, we are being told that this Ramadan, it grants us the opportunity to be freed from the fire of hell. And we cannot have freedom from the fire of hell unless we are pure, unless we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the qalbin salim, in a pure state. 
And we will only return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a pure state if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely forgives us for our wrongdoings, for our mistakes. And so we have the opportunity in these last nights and days of Ramadan to increase our axing of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us... If we were people who made the best use of Ramadan, let there be istiqama, let there be steadfastness, let there be continuity in terms of every good things that we have done. And if we have not re really made good use of Ramadan, let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, for he is the oft forgiving, most merciful. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us good in this life and good in the life hereafter, and that he saves us from the torment of hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fast, our zakah, our sadaqat, and every good deed that we have done during this blessed month of Ramadan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'min al-ghinayat min kulli dhanbin wa atubu ilayh innahu huwa al-ghafuru al-rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salam wa la sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in, ridwanullahi alayhim ila yawmiddin, amma ba'd. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has written perfection for everything. Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, Inna Allah katab al ihsan ala kulli shay. Allah has written perfection for everything. And so a Muslim, he strives for perfection in his life. If we look at the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when Jibrail came to him teaching him about his deen, it is said that when the Prophet وسلم, answered the question about ihsan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Ihsan an ta'abudu Allah ka'annaka tarah fa'in lam takun tarahu fa'innahu yarak. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him. And even though you cannot see him, you understand or you worship Allah in this way that Allah sees and he knows everything that you do. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, there must be that awareness. There must be that, uh, that, that, that conviction that whatever we do in life, whether it is being done secretly or openly, that yes, Allah is aware of it and we must find within us to make sure that all the deeds that we do, it is done for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in his famous book, Imam al-Ghazali said, talk about this concept of the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we must worship Allah as if we see him. And we must understand that Allah sees and knows everything that we do. Imam Ghazali, he tells the story of a very famous sheikh, Junaid al-Baghdadi. This sheikh, it is said that he had many disciples and he favored one of them over the others. And the others were not too pleased about this that he was favoring this one over them. And so 
one day Junaid al-Baghdadi, he wanted to prove to them or show them why he favored this youth. So he called them all together and he gave each one of them a fowl or what you may say a chicken. And he said to them, go and kill, slaughter this fowl or this chicken in a place where you would not, uh, you know, the, where no one would see you. And so everyone went and they went to different corners and slaughtered the fowl. With the exception of this youth, this young man who was favored by Junaid al Baghdadi. And when they all returned, he asked them, they said, We did what you told us to do, and we did it in remote places and places where we weren't seen by anyone. And he looked at the young man and he said, Why is it that you still have yours with you? And he said, I searched everywhere, but everywhere I went, I was seen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I couldn't do as you said, because Allah sees and He hears everything. He knows everything. And that's the concept, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that we ought to develop as we, we, we exit Ramadan, that everything that we do in life, remember that it is seen and it is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this month of Ramadan, it was a month of, you know, what uh, it, it is said by Hassan al-Basri, that this month, it is a month of a racetrack. You know, once it is said that Hassan al-Basri, he passed by a group of people who made mockery of Ramadan. You know, we have Muslims today who make mockery of Ramadan. Why do you have to fence? Why do you have to stay up late hours at night? And so Hassan al-Basri, he said, indeed Allah has created the month of Ramadan as a racetrack for his servants where they compete with one another in worshiping him. A group has advanced ahead and went while other groups have lagged behind. The group has advanced because that group has done what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. And the other group has done nothing of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. And so Hassan al-Basri, he said, those who have come ahead are the winners. And those who have mocked are the losers. It's all about winning and losing, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون not equal are the dwellers of hellfire and the dwellers of paradise. The dwellers of paradise, they are the successful ones. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us, that he gives us good in this life and good in the life hereafter, and that he saves us from the torment of hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to witness many more Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bless and guide us. لَقَدْ أَمَرَنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِينَ يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى اللهم خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وعثمان وعلي ونستة الباتين المبشرين بالجنة وانسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لا لكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقيم السلام
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر